Well, let's look at graphs of real world situations today. So we're trying to look at graphs that with the same key features that we've been looking at in lessons 6.1 and 6.2, domain, range, y-intercept, min, and maximum. Okay, so it's more of the same basically, except today we're looking at how they're affected by real world situations. Like for example, sometimes it doesn't make sense to include certain parts of the domain on of a function when we're talking in real world situations. So let's look. Here's the function f of x is equal to 3 plus 2x, and it's graphed below. Okay. The domain and range, domain is all numbers to the right and all numbers to the left. It's all real numbers. Okay, the domain is all real numbers. And the range is all real numbers. Okay, it's going down to negative infinity, it's going up to negative uh, to positive infinity. So the domain and range are both the same answer for this one. All real numbers. In many real world situations, not all of the values make sense for the domain and range. For example, distance cannot be negative. You can't say I'm going negative five feet. Number of people cannot be decimals or fractions. You can't have 23 and a half people in your classroom. In such situations, the values for the, that make sense for the domain are going to be called reasonable domain and range. And so we're going to need to start looking at the, what situation we have and then think about what numbers would be reasonable to call as our domain and our range. All right, so let's look at the example. A taxi ride costs an initial rate of $3, which is charged as soon as you get in the cab, plus $2 for each mile travel. Cost of traveling x miles is given by the function 3 plus 2x. What are the reasonable domain range? First, let's remember domain is our x's, which is our independent variables. Okay, the variable that doesn't depend on anything else is independent. And for this situation, it is going to be how many miles we travel in the cab. Okay, so one mile, two miles, three miles, four, and so on. The dependent variable is the variable that does depend on other things for it to happen. And that's going to be how much money we're being charged. That depends on how many miles we're going. So our dependent variable, our y, our, it's going to be our range. It's going to be money for this graph. <clears throat> so let's look at this graph and think of the reasonable domain. Okay, what does x represent and what makes sense? This is miles, as we said. X is our miles. So what makes sense? Starting at zero makes sense when you're talking about getting into the cab. You can't go negative four miles. You're either going to go into the positive direction. So when you're taking a cab. So the things that make sense is starting at zero. Okay, you can not go anywhere if you get in the cab. You can just get in and then get out. And you can get in the cab and you can go one mile or two miles or three miles. So the domain that's going to be reasonable is x is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. X is greater than or equal to zero. That's going to be our reasonable domain for this one. All right. Let's think about the range. How much money we're getting charged. What's a reasonable range? Well, the cab driver is not going to pay me, so it's not going to be negative, okay? And I do have to pay $3 just to get in the cab. So that'll be $3 is our starting point, okay? So everything less than that is not reasonable, okay? We're not going to get paid to get into the cab. So we're going to say $3, and then it starts charging us as we go $2 for each mile. So our range is going to be Y is greater than or equal to three, okay? And so that's the reasonable amount of that you can be charged from three and up. So, very good. All right, let's look at A. A banquet hall charges $15 per person plus a $100 setup fee. 
The cost for x people is given by the function 100 plus 15x. What's a reasonable domain and range? Well, the domain, our independent variable, is going to be the number of people. So what's reasonable amounts of people that we can have? Uh, no people, zero. One person, two persons, three people, four people, and up. So basically, the whole numbers are going to be our reasonable domain. Okay? X would be greater than or equal to zero, but you can only count the whole numbers because you people don't come in parts or fractions. And you can't have negative people. So that would be the domain. X is greater than or equal to zero with the whole numbers. Okay, you gotta you gotta specify that you can't have the the uh, non whole numbers. The range, all right, is gonna be our money because it's it that depends on how many people we have is how much money we're gonna get. Okay, we're going to start at 100. That's just to get the building. We need to pay $100. So 100 is going to be our starting point. Or, and then we're going to go up from there. Okay, so Y would be greater than or equal to 100. Okay, let's look at B. Eight, bill, eight ball billiards. It's like a pool, playing pool. Charges five dollars to rent a table and then ten dollars per game. I'm sorry, per hour of gameplay, rounded to the nearest whole hour. Cost of playing billiards for X hours is given by the function five plus ten X. What's a reasonable domain and range? Our domain is going to be our X, the number of hours we play. Reasonably, we can play no hours, zero, and we can play, you know, one or two or three or four hours. They're going to round it to the nearest whole number. So greater than or equal to zero the whole numbers and then our range is the money that we're paying for those hours okay our range is going to be starting at five because you just have to pay five to get a table let me write this one so you can see it so our domain be x is greater than or equal to zero. And then our range is going to be five. And then how much do you get for the second? Since they're rounding everything. They're, they're charging you specific amounts. So you're going to get $10 for the first hour plus the five you did. So that'll be 15 And then for the second one, you'd need another $10, 25 and then 35 and then 45 and so on. And that's going to be our range. Since we are going to have to pay $5, and then we have to pay $10 for every hour, and they're rounding to the nearest whole number. They're not charging us any partial amounts. We can't count the partial amounts in between that way. So we have to count exactly what we get, 5, 15, 25, 35, 45. Okay. Let's skip down to number three. Remember that this is a discrete graph and not continuous. It's not connected, so it's discrete. The domain is going to be your x's, the y's will be your range. So my x's, my domain, are going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Because there are specific points, just like we've done in previous lessons. The domain is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then our range are also just specific points. It's going to be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Okay, so domain and range for this one. This is a like a review sort of question. This was done back in lessons 5, 2, and 5, 3, where we had discrete domains and ranges. 
Uh, let's see. We're going to skip that because you just make your own situation for that that makes up, that goes along with those numbers. See, for a function with the models of real world situation, the dependent variable represents a person's height. What's a reasonable range in people's height? Well, I guess if you're zero with your board, and then you're born, you get you can be one foot, and then two feet, and three feet, and you can go up to five and a half feet, like some people, or five and nine tenths, or six feet or seven feet. Okay, maybe even eight feet. Although that would be like one of the tallest people in the world, I think. So our range is going to be greater than zero, basically, greater than or equal to zero. That would be reasonable. A tour company charges 20. You can't have negative heights is what I'm trying to say. A tour company charges $25 an hour for a tour director plus 75 per tour member. The total cost is given here. What's a reasonable domain? Okay, the amount of people is our domain. Okay, the group of people is our X, our domain. So what would be the reasonable domains? Uh, the whole numbers. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. You can have, you know, six, seven people on there. You can't just, you can't have half a person, though. You can't have 7.3 people. So it would be the whole numbers. All right. Try this last problem on your own just to see if you can say which one is the independent. I mean, they sort of tell you in the problem the X is the independent one. And the Y is going to be the dependent one. Okay. But remember, independent means it doesn't have anything to do with anything else. Dependent means it does depend on what the other one is. And then think of some reasonable domain or ranges for this problem using the numbers that they give you and what they're talking about the situation.